there's a way to make an entrance. My destiny. It was now a conspiracy of witches. Download Veely today. Welcome to Room Service, I'm Sarah Richardson. Are you living with a bathroom or two that needs a new look? We're gonna scrub away the past and reveal two clean, modern masterpieces by weaving in flexible storage, making a shower stall that's crystal clear, and creating a mat fit for a prince. We're giving two baths the Royal Renault treatment, and it's only on room service. This suburban bungalow is home to two guys and two baths. Mitch, how long have you guys lived in this house for? About a year. And do you like it? Yeah. Is it a good house? You love it. Mm -hmm. You love it. Kind of. Part one of my double bathroom challenge is the powder room, it's the family bathroom, and it's also Mitch's bathroom. You can't argue with the size, it's got a great layout. The only problem is that the overall concept is slightly outdated at this point. It's all done in shades of lemon yellow with gold fleck countertops. So we're gonna rip out everything, keeping all of the plumbing in the existing locations, and we're gonna introduce a much more neutral and natural color palette, hoping to use some natural stone but make a creative use of all the materials to help stretch the budget. We'll replace the vanity, add some new lights in on either side of it to open it up, make it seem a little bit more inviting. We'll also update the overhead fixture, a new mirror, definitely replace the yellow toilet, add some shelves in here that just work within this cubby area. So some floating shelves for towels and baskets. And then the other thing is the bath area. Do you like having a bathtub? Yeah. A jacuzzi one. A jacuzzi tub. Wow, that's pretty grown up. We'll focus on getting a tub that's hopefully a little bit deeper for Mitchell to soak in and then use an inexpensive wall tile and shower system that really makes the most out of this bathroom. Now, let's check out the master. Bathroom two, the master ensuite is smaller and darker, definitely with this country motif. A little bit uh, out of character with the contemporary feeling we're trying to achieve throughout the house. So we're gonna look at replacing all of the elements in here, removing the tongue and groove ceiling, all of the wallpaper, mirrors, lights, basically the whole shooting match. The only thing that I really need to point out is the double vanity. I've never seen two sinks squished so close together. I'm sure that one sink will do because I don't think you could fit two people standing side by side in this bathroom. We'll keep everything in the same place that it is. We're just gonna brighten it up, we're gonna freshen it up, still using natural materials, stone on the floor I hope and on the counter and tile in the shower instead of the paneling. The other thing is that we have the world's smallest bathtub measuring three by three feet and only six inches deep so I think just a curb will do the trick there and we'll focus on making both of these bathrooms completely different. Uh, different palettes, lighter in this room, more natural in the other but contemporary and stylish for our two guys. What does the bath of your dreams look like? Ours is crisp and clean, inspired by natural texture and elements from the sea. Whether chalky white coral or the lustrous sheen of a nautilus shell, the options for color are endless. We are creating spa-inspired baths that are as soothing and familiar as a chunky cable sweater. When we're done, these spaces will awaken and refresh and provide an invigorating place to start the day. set for our bathroom renovations. Demolition is about to start any time now, so I thought I'd just hit the streets in search of some accessories while all that hard work is going on back at the house. Now, I've got two diverse plans set up for these bathrooms. One is gonna have natural green slate and cherry, while the other one is gonna have honed marble and a painted finish. One thing that I'll need for both of them is some additional storage, and I thought baskets would be just the key. Take this one for example, this is made of natural jute 
and it has a sort of warm reddish color that will work really well with the cherry. And the great thing about them is that they have really straight sides. So they're ideal for storing um, just about any bottles and toiletries because they'll stay standing upright. So that's one. Now let me show you some of the other varieties that they're available in. This is water hyacinth. And I think that so many of these materials and textures are well suited to use in the bathroom. The water hyacinth is a fatter sort of reed shaped material with a slightly greenish undertone to it. For a darker, higher contrast option, here it is done as a chocolate water hyacinth. If you want to stay with the traditional option, wicker is always a good choice. In a larger size, you could use it to store towels. Otherwise, again, in a small family bathroom, you could give each kid their own bin to keep things organized. How about this one, which coordinates both a teak panel on the ends and then this sort of dyed matchstick treatment in between. This is more for an Asian or Indonesian inspired bathroom effect. Well, with all the colors and textures, I've made my choices. I'm going with jute for the family bathroom for the way it'll complement the cherry. I'm gonna go with the dark stained water hyacinth for the master bathroom. And I am certain that this collection of baskets is gonna help our two guys keep organized and keep everything in control. Now, after all that hard work, I'm heading inside to pay and perhaps even to grab myself a little something at the bakery next door. demolition is done and we're starting to put things back together. We've got a long way to go yet and it's still going to be dusty for a while. But we decided to attack both of these bathrooms at the same time. So Mitchell and Dave have moved out and gone to stay with friends. Now the reason for doing this is that, let's face it, it's not fun for anybody to live through renovation. By doing both bathrooms at the same time, we were able to maximize the contractor's use of his time and do it much more efficiently. It means that in the overall scheme of things, it'll take a lot less time, almost half the time, as he can run back and forth between the two bathrooms doing the same things instead of starting top to bottom in one and then going and doing the other. So something you might want to keep in mind. Another thing you might want to keep in mind if you're renovating is to think about the placement of the plumbing fixtures. Now I often find that people start talking about, oh I want to take this sink here and move it over there, I want to move the toilet. If you're watching the bottom line and you're trying to do a renovation on a tight budget, you should really try and keep the plumbing where it is as much as possible. In this case, let me show you what we've done. There was a double vanity here and we've kept the width of it, but we've decided to only go with a single sink. So we've closed over the plumbing on the left hand side, keeping it just on the right hand side instead of moving it to the center. This will create an open display space on the left side of the vanity. It's going to look very sleek, very chic. We have kept the toilet in the same place and as you can see the original plumbing is here and we're just going to work off that for our new shower and tub combination. Same goes for the master. We've actually installed one extra shower head. We've gone with a rain shower head that's coming from the center and that required an extra diverter. Now that's the only plumbing change that we made so that was a worthwhile investment but otherwise we've tried to work with everything where it is. We've heightened the ceiling here in this shower area removing the bulkhead we've added a light we've added a pair of sconces on either side of the vanity in the big bathroom and in the master ensuite we've just moved the sconce up a little bit on the wall wherever possible we've tried to keep it the same and we're just tweaking it to make it that much better we've got a long way to go and there's going to be a lot more dust before we're done but when we are we are going to have two magnificent bathrooms When you're shopping for tile, the selection is dizzying. If you're thinking of natural stone, here's a couple of pointers to keep in mind. You might be interested to know that slate starts at a price point of about $5 a square foot. Now that's about half the price of using marble or granite. It's a great solution when you're trying to do things on a budget. If you're interested in using marble, couple things to keep in mind. You can choose a polished marble, which is the traditional and elegant solution, but it can get slick and slippery when wet, so you'll want to stay away from it if you have little kids. Otherwise, you can choose a honed finish, which is nice for a contemporary look, it's what I'm going to use, or for a rustic look, you can use a tumbled marble. Whatever your choice in natural stone, it's always beautiful. You just need to choose the one that's best suited for you and your home. Now, 
I'm Michael. I'm doing a double bathroom renovation, and I want to put a glass shower door in one of the bathrooms right. because it's really sleek and it looks beautiful. I've been wandering around back here, and I've picked up some samples. And tell me, what sort of glass do you need to use to make a shower enclosure? Well, what we normally use, sir, is uh, 10 mil thick, 3 eighths of an inch thick. Okay. Clear glass. Okay. All right. Now, that's thick enough to be safety, so it's tempered, mm -hmm. and also rich enough on the look. And what does the tempering do to the glass? It's a heat tempering process where it goes through and almost bakes it, if you will. Okay. So when and if, it, for whatever reason, it does get broken, it'll break into these very small pieces as a safety value. Wow. And does this add a lot to the cost of the glass? It definitely makes a factor in the cost, for sure. Okay. There's the work involved beforehand. So we've got to cut, polish, drill the holes, send it out for the tempering then. Mm -hmm for the safety reasons, obviously, but for sure all the work involved in the glass. Okay, that's important. because the thing is, when I think about a sheet of glass, a sheet of glass on its own isn't extraordinarily expensive. That's right. But I know whenever I've ordered a shower door, it's always <clears throat> But it really is the only way to get a really sleek and clean look that's right. in a bathroom. That's right, it I looks mean, fantastic. No... Yep, the okay. frameless shower enclosures just give you that depth, which is incredible. Okay, now tell me a bit about moving these sheets of glass around in house time, because I, whenever I've been here, I've only seen them like That's this, right. and I want to know how they how do they get from here, over there, and all the way through. Well, the it takes two people to carry it vertically. Yeah. We have a small trolley that they can carry it around the shop with. Okay. So they don't have to lift it. They'll bring it over to the cutting table, yeah. and it's a hydraulic cutting table that lift up so they can safely place it on the table and then lower the table down. Okay. And then what about how the glass is cut? What's the is nope. it a saw or what is? No, nope. they use a it's a glass cutter. It's a handheld glass cutter, and you use a straight edge, and we'll measure and then simply cut it, you score the top, and then snap it apart. So okay. you don't have to cut all the way through it? No, no, you just score the top, and okay. uh, let the cutter just, uh, let the gravity do the rest. And then, um, what about all of the, the drilling for the hardware? Because yep. I know there's a huge selection of hardware that's now available, that's right. right? It's that's not right. just it's a single just handle. It's incredible what's available now. I mean, obviously we have work to do, we have to cut and drill the holes and notches to fit the hardware to the glass. So we use um, a hollow core diamond impregnated bit so we can drill right through the glass and leave ourselves a hole or a notch, whatever is necessary. Okay. Okay. And as far as measuring goes, what's the reason for having a professional come and measure as opposed to doing it yourself? Well, it's my responsibility, so I guarantee that my sizes will come and they'll fit. Okay. If we're dealing with tempered glass and if I measured it myself and it didn't fit, can it be... Well, be cut no, down we, after? unfortunately, we can't change the sizes after glasses. So that's why I'm that's calling you. Okay. <laughs> that is the size. Okay. Double, double, cream. <laughs> oh, thank you so what much. What are you? Uh, it cream. When I love the look of monogram towels in a bathroom. I think they're crisp and they just add a little whimsical touch. Now, Mitch's initial for his first name is M, and it also happens to be the initial for his last name. So naturally, I thought, why not add a little bit of a special touch to his bathroom just to personalize it a bit? What I'm starting with is just a basic white terry cloth bath mat, and I chose one that isn't too thick. It's nice and soft and absorbent, but not extraordinarily thick because I'm gonna need to be sewing on top of this. So I'm using a scrap of fabric Fabric, and this is a uh, woven check in a sort of a soft green with cream. We've done the floor in this bathroom in a green slate and the walls are painted a soft cream. So this will just sort of reference that and help to pull the whole scheme together. What I want to do is use some interfacing, which is a fabric stiffener. It's just an iron-on interfacing. And as you can see, the side that irons onto the fabric has little beads of glue on it and so we want to set that face side down onto our fabric and then put your iron on a high heat setting no steam but on a relatively high heat and just iron over the entire surface Okay, once you've ironed that, you want to design your letter. Now, I'm gonna do this freehand, but if you don't feel that you have a great freehand technique, here's another option. You can print out a letter, you can experiment with different fonts on your computer, and then you can trace that onto your interfacing. But I'm gonna do my own uh, drawing of the letter here.
I'm just gonna make this really easy and use the width of my ruler to draw the sides. If you're adding letters onto anything and stitching them in place, you don't want the elements of the letter to be so thin that they're difficult to sew. Okay, so there we go. My letter is all ready to go and I can just cut that out with the scissors. A great advantage to doing this, adding the interfacing means that the fabric is much easier to work with. If you didn't put the interfacing on, your fabric will move all over the place when you go to cut it. So there you go. As you can see, we're getting a really crisp line and we won't have any problems with fraying. So I've got one that I've already cut out and it is ready to go. So that's centered. And I'm just gonna use a couple pins to hold it in place. Okay, great. Now, I'm ready to go. I'm using my sewing machine and I've set the stitch to the widest zigzag stitch possible and I want the stitch to be close together. Here we go. Now you want to end with your needle on the outside and instead of cutting it, I suggest you just keep spinning the bath mat in place. to make sure that you pre-wash your bath mat and the fabric that you're going to use so that everything has been pre-shrunk. You don't want to have any twisting or shrinking after you've sewn this on. And when you get to the final end, just zigzag back, double overing, doubling over to make sure that it won't fray. Now I get to take a look. And there we go. My monogram is complete. M is for Mitch and M is for Marvelous. Since Neanderthal man, the cutting edge in shaving has included a wild array of paraphernalia. Shaving brushes first appeared in France around 1750 and the best still use badger hair or boar bristles to get the frothiest lather. The Victorians introduced the shaving mug to hold the brush and soap and allow them to dry. Men used to keep their mugs at the local barber shop. Nowadays, these rare finds still give us a sharp picture of a bygone era. I know what you're thinking, this doesn't look like your average kid's bathroom, but the way I look at it, all kids eventually grow up and you might as well design something that works with the style of the house. Now this room also happens to be the powder room in the main bathroom for the house. So we've gone with a sort of sleek and somewhat masculine look for the two guys in this place. I've started out with a natural green slate on the floor. I love the texture of slate, ideal choice for a kid's bathroom because it's never slippery. And it provides the foundation for the overall color scheme in this room. I've picked up the same green in the countertop. This is a German greenstone top, which is a type of limestone, and it has really interesting color variation. We've chosen to go with brushed nickel faucets throughout on the sink here and also in the shower stall. Then this is a floating vanity, very sleek. We didn't need tons of storage. So I just did a couple of drawers that hide seamlessly within the front of it and picked up this same cherry tone again on a series of four open shelves that go above the toilet. Now this provides a place for extra toiletries, for towels, and it creates a focal point when you walk into the room. Now another thing where we added a touch of cherry is the mirror that goes above the vanity. It's long and lean, and you'll notice that I decided to mount the light fixtures on the sides instead of putting them on that back wall and having the mirror end up shorter. I love the shades. They have this tall lean line and the shades are almost like a Japanese paper and they look beautiful. So that is on a dimmer switch of course so that if there's entertaining going on they can be turned down low. Now the bathtub area is a big improvement. You'll remember before it had a shower curtain and some folding doors. Really not very
very appealing, but look at it now. We've brought it right up to the ceiling, added a halogen light, three by six subway tiles, brushed nickel accessories, and of course, our bath mat monogrammed, especially for Mitch and waiting for wet feet to get on it. I used to have a hard time getting Mitchell to have a bath or a shower. Now he's asking me to have baths and showers all the time, which is great. But I can't get him out of the shower now, or the bath. <laughs> Our next stop on the double bathroom tour is the master ensuite, and you'll have to remember all those ducks and that kind of hunting theme was here before. Well, big improvement. We've gone with a much lighter pellet than what we used in the family bathroom. We've gone with honed crema marfil marble on the countertop in here in the vanity. Then we did a honed 12 inch marble on the floor. And my favorite part is what's in the shower. Notice the perfectly fitting shower door, thanks to Michael's expert measurements. And we have two by two inch glass mosaic tiles. And I think they make it look like this really watery light feeling. We've gone all out on this shower. We've got a rain shower head and even a combined shower system that we found that has a shower head and a couple of body sprays. This is a decadent place to start every day. For accessories, we went simple. One black and white photograph framed in a dark mahogany frame that picks up on those great baskets that I found when I was out shopping, a round mirror with a beveled edge that I just picked up at a home supply store, a chrome sconce with a frosted shade to pick up on all of the chrome accessories that I've used throughout, a really classic style on this handle faucet, and pure white towels. We've got two guys with two bathrooms, slightly different looks, but both of them are sure to please. I'm Sarah Richardson, and I hope you'll join me next time on Room Service.